Hello everybody, today I have something very exciting to share with all of you. Something that we have definitely needed on this channel for a very long time. It's a spectrometer, a light meter, by Seconic. This is a very professional, high-end brand and has been well known in the industry for their light meters for many, many years. Now the main problem with that, being a well-known high-end brand, it is quite expensive and that's really why I haven't gotten around to picking one of these up. I could get a cheaper model or something, you know, that would suit uh, what we're needing to do here, getting a spectrum of light, whether it be something I hold up to the camera and get a spectrum that way, or a device like this. But I wanted to get a actual professional light meter, a real spectrometer that'll give us what we're looking for, and more. So this particular device is used for photography, video, all kinds of scenarios where you need the light color temperature to be a certain color. And you can target that color temperature by setting it in the settings of this device, and it'll tell you what gels and things to put on your lights to get that color that you're looking for. It's very cool, and I'm sure it can do a lot more than I would ever know what to do with with this thing. But of course, what we're going to use it for is to get spectrum of lights, of course. And as you'll see, it gives us some extra things as well. Now, being a professional high-end device, this thing wasn't very cheap. And that was another thing that, uh, well, why I haven't gotten one earlier. I was able to find this one on eBay for a pretty decent price all things considered, in very good condition uh, compared to a brand new one, which is equivalent to a pretty well high-end PC. So, very expensive piece of equipment here, but I am definitely looking forward to adding this to the videos. It is something that the videos have needed for a very long time, and I'm super excited to get right into it. So let's do that. Here's the case. Obviously, it comes in this really nice little case here. Looks like you can put it on like your belt loop or something. And then uh, you can carry it around or, you know, your your kit or whatever it is. You can put it wherever. We have our little zipper here. And inside, we have the device itself. So, I don't know, here's my hand. That's not really a good representation of it. But you hold it like so. And I'm just trying to think of something that we can compare this to. This isn't the best comparison, but it's a pretty standard LED bulb, about A19 in shape. And it's about two of them or so. It's about the size of a smartphone, really. I'd use my smartphone to compare it for you, but I'm using it to record this video. Either way, we have about a, I don't know, maybe four inch screen or so. It kind of reminds me of an iPod Touch about size, the fifth gen ones. At the top, we have our light sensor itself, and we have three different modes. There's calibration, which blacks out the sensor inside so that it can calibrate itself. There's ambient light mode, which is what we will be using the most because we just want to know the spectrum of light here or whatever we're testing. And then there's a high intensity flash if you're trying to get the color of just a flash. So those are the three options and you just rotate this collar here to achieve whatever one you'd like. Now this thing also spins so you can turn it around to point it in a direction you'd like. Of course, this one makes sense because maybe you're getting a light behind it there, and maybe that's what we'll be using the most. It really depends. We'll uh, use it whatever is the best way, of course. Now, this is the C700 model. This is not the newest model that Seconic makes. It's currently the C800 that they make. This is also the Dash U model, which I'm not really sure what that means. I tried looking through their manuals, but it keeps bringing you back to the base C700, so I don't know if there's something extra here or what. Also looking online, the C800 can be downgraded to a 700, so maybe there's something in here that the 800 doesn't have, or if you like that older software. I'm not entirely sure, but comparing the two online, uh, this slightly older model versus the newer C800, they look pretty much identical and do the exact same thing. So that also helped me achieve getting a, a better deal on one of these things. Obviously, we already went over the screen here. It is kind of like a, what would you call it, a capacitive touch. It's not like a modern smartphone screen. It's more like your little screen on your Nintendo DS. And we have our little home button here. On the bottom, 
We have a plug for flash. You can plug different flashes in here. And we also have a USB mini plug here. So we should be able to take our readings from this device, import them to the computer, and get them right on screen here for all of you to see. So you don't necessarily have to just, you know, look at this. But we'll probably do both and uh, I'll just overlay or something. I haven't played around with it on the computer yet, but there is software. I do have it installed on my Mac Mini, and it does work. It doesn't throw any errors or anything. So on the side here, we have our power button and memory. This is what will store our readings so we can read them on the computer at a later date. And we have our measurement button here. So when you're holding it, you can conveniently just push that button, and it'll take a measurement of the current light situation. On the back of the device, we can see the Siconic logo, color meter, the model, made in Japan. Uh, I'm guessing that's a serial number. They don't seem to make very many of these, being 402. <laughs> we do have a mount here, so we can mount it to a tripod. And believe it or not, this device runs on two AA batteries, believe it or not. I mean, it's just two standard AA batteries runs this device. You'd think it would need more or something like that. But no, just two double A's, and it works. Very cool. Okay, let's get this thing turned on. So we'll hold down the power button here. And it will probably do a dark mode calibration, because I've had this off for a while. And if you've had it off for a while, it will want to do a calibration. So we'll see if it wants to do that. Yep, there it goes. So you have our little loading progress bar there. Okay, so here we are, booted up. Now, it looks like the last thing I had open is the uh, color rating index here, or CRI, color rendering index, I should say. Um, but if we hit this little button up here, we get our different apps, and we can do the same thing with our home button here. So we can get our reading in uh, text here, as you can see. We can set our target temperature, whatever we're looking for that we want the video to be at. I just set it at something random because I'm not concerned about that with what we're doing. And we have what we care the most about, which is spectrum. So here's a light. I forget what one I was measuring, but uh, it saved our last information here. And you can see we get our color temperature, our lux. So we don't necessarily need the uh, little lux meter anymore. It'll do it for us here. And we have our CRI. Very cool. And you can change these. You can tap on them and change them to a whole bunch of different stuff if you want to see certain wavelengths of light or, you know, just combined information. You can change those three settings. So I set them to the most common three settings that we would like to look at and get information from. So that's pretty cool. Now, obviously, we have our graph here at the bottom. We can hit zoom in and we can get a nice big look at that. Now, again, I should be able to export this and get us a nice clear version on the screen so we don't necessarily always have to do this but it's nice that that's there so you can get a nice accurate you know whatever now this okay you can change it ambient mode and i believe if you change this because we need to open it up uh, to get a reading and the little dots up here change depending on what what you're doing so we'll do ambient there if we go back, we can hit our home button here. We'll get to our apps. Of course, there's settings. You can do all kinds of stuff. Again, I don't know what all of it is, but there's definitely a lot here uh, for professionals to use in getting their right colors and stuff. Very cool stuff here. Again, 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 I don't know all of it, but we're going to spend most of our time here in Spectrum. So let's go ahead and get a light reading on the lights that we're using here to film this video. So we're going to hit measure. And there it is. That's our current information of the light lighting this video. So we're currently at uh, 3,817K. Uh, let's see, uh, 2,030 lux and a CRI of 81.6. So if I remember correctly, the RA is the standard... Uh, respected measurement of CRI, and then you can get the individual ones here. So it kind of combines them all together. 
Uh, but again, you can get individual ones if you so desire. And that's what this is about because you want to find the true red and it's kind of hard to get, which you can see here. We don't have a lot of true red in our light at the moment. But the top one here is our color rendering index, of course, the white one. And I believe it takes some of these into account and combines them. I don't know all the mathematics behind it, but there's a lot going on here. So let's go back to our main apps and spectrum. And that's our current lighting. So if I turn off some of the lights here, we'll try some specific ones that are lighting up. Okay, let's do it again with just these LED fluorescent tubes here. And there we got the graph for that. Pretty cool. Pretty much uh, bang on for what they said it would be. Uh, 4,000. Well, maybe it was 4,200. You know, let me look at the bulbs here closer. I'm pretty sure the bulbs are... 4100k so right around there and the color rating index okay so let's turn off that and let's turn on just our led bulb here which is more of a warm white let's get a reading there there we go and we can do the fluorescent tube cool white fluorescent here we go isn't that cool that must be more of a daylight if it's given out that. Let me look closer. Let me look closer. Uh, it just says DX. So maybe it's Cool White Deluxe or something. But yeah, okay. Let's get a combination of the two uh, with the drafting table lamp. Nice. This thing is going to be a lot of fun. Let's see what else we can test with it. Okay, in this little floodlight here, I have a 9-watt warm white PL flood adapter. Very cool. Let's get a reading from that. There we go. That's our reading with the PL bulb. Pretty spiky, as you can see. Definitely 2700K, just like it says. Now, I have another one of these over here that also has a PL adapter and apparently a cobweb. So let's take a look at that. This one's a cool white. I love these floodlight PL adapters. These things are so cool. Let's get a reading on that. There we go. And that is about 4,000K or so. Let's see if we can get a reading of the sunlight outside. There we go. Much better, of course. It's, it is sunlight. Got to get a reading on one of my favorites here. I love this circle line adapter. And I love the warm white color it produces. Pretty cool. Last but not least, I wonder if we can get any information off of this little neon. So I'll hold it kind of close. Under. But uh, you know what? It did do it. Connecting it up to a computer is actually quite easy. You just need to find a mini USB cable, which is easier said than done. But I do have one here, which is great. And you bring up the little software here. And there we go. So we have our utility. We can go to memory data. And we'll click on untitled. This took me a minute to figure out because there was nothing here. But then it connects to the device and you can see all the previously saved data. And here's our circle line in the lamp uh, data. I took this before we did the video here today. But if we preview that, we get the graph. And it's resizable. It changes as you do it, so it's not just an image. And you also get all the other data as well. So this is really cool. We can provide all kinds of data now. I like this. I really do hope you enjoyed this quick little overview of the Seconic C700 Spectrometer. We finally have one on the channel. Now, a uh, disclaimer, you're probably going to see some videos coming up here that do not have this device, because I have a little bit of a backlog um, that I'm going through, and then you'll start seeing this in every single video. So, if you don't see it, it's definitely coming, and a lot of the mercury vapor bulbs coming up here, they definitely will have this, and this is going to be really exciting to play around with. As always, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, be sure to give it a like down below and leave a comment. I do enjoy reading all of your comments. If you haven't already, 
Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more great videos like this one. Also check out my secondary channel Mercove and subscribe over there for more behind the scenes and alternative content. Of course, check out the other videos here on this screen. And as always, thank you very much for watching.